Hey guys, it's Kelsey. I'm back with another scrapbooking process video and today is scrap five. So we have to use a throwback item, a sketch, a stencil, torn paper, and ribbon. So here's the sketch we have to use. It is from Rochelle Spears and I love this sketch. This is a really good sketch for more to work from. I feel like it's also really versatile and in my style already. Um, so I'm kind of pulling out my five items here. So um, I have them on my desk and I know what I need to do. The biggest one that threw me for a loop is a stencil because I don't use stencils all that often. But I thought this would be a good chance to do some kind of subtle white mixed media in the background of this layout. I am turning the sketch on its side. So the banner that runs across the bottom of the two photos is actually going to run vertically up the left side of the page. So I thought it would be nice to use this chevron stencil to do some white mixed media chevrons. Um, kind of behind where that banner is going to go just to add to that vertical element. So I'm just getting that down really quick. Um, kind of messy, not being too careful about it. <laughs> I feel like when I'm using white mixed media on a color, I kind of like it to look messier. Uh, <laughs> so I'm setting that aside to dry while I start working on the other elements of the sketch. So I have this gutted portion of the wood grain I pulled in from my second layout. And I'm thinking that can be the large square layer behind my two photos. And then I already had a scrap of this uh, brick red gingham from my first layout. So it was kind of already the size I needed for the banner. <laughs> so I just trimmed it into a banner and that's the base of my sketch. I have two four by sixes here from Avery <laughs> and Bennett when we went to the Sleepy Hollow pumpkin patch and they're just the cutest little fall photos. Um, this collection I don't think of as fall, but it is really good for fall. <laughs> so I pulled in pretty much whatever colors were in the photo. So I loved the wood grain already. I loved the brick red. And for my background, I had chosen that yellow um, kind of daisy print. So I think the yellows will be really nice with the brick red and the wood grain. All very warm tones, very autumnal, even though they're flowers. <laughs> There's flowers in the picture, so it counts. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and start composing this again. I gutted a huge section of the wood grain because um, these photos I'm going to mat together on a piece of white and you won't see the hole. So <laughs> I'm going to be salvaging that wood grain. Even though I have a whole pack of wood grain paper, I still, my favorite pieces, I, I still can't help but gut. So <laughs> um, I'm just taking a plain piece of white to mat the two photos in together. And this is where I wanted to use my throwback item. So the throwback item I'm pulling in are the little decorative cutting scissors. I only have one pair, but I remember me and my mom had the whole big carousel that had all the different shit types of decorative scissors. I remember my favorite one was the torn paper <laughs> um, pattern, but the only one I have is this little zigzag pattern. So I'm just going to trim the edge of this mat to give it a little interest. This is the layer or the side of this photo mat that's running onto the banner to the left. So I thought it'd be nice to have some decorative edge on that side. <laughs> um, so I'm just doing that on the one side, straight edges on the other side. I think that's really cool, really interesting. <laughs> so uh, if you have these scissors, this is my challenge to you is to use them on your next layout because <laughs> I know they've been stuffed in drawers and closets and forgotten about for I mean, mine was probably a decade, <laughs> so happy I pulled it out for this one. I'm going to try and be better about it, um, but now that I have that matted on the white, I'm going to go ahead and glue down my whole little photo section. Um, I know for my sketch, this is how it's going to be. I'm not going to tweak too much on it. I've already kind of turned the sketch, so <laughs> I'm trying to keep everything else placed uh, where it was. I'm just doing a check really quick to see spacing wise how it'll look on the background. Um, it's not quite dry yet, though, so I'm going to set it back to the side and keep working from my little piece here. Um, I thought the lion looked really cute just from the color wise, but it's also got this light blue little bow um, tied on it, which matches Avery's pants. So I think that's kind of cute. It pulls in that little touch of blue from the photo. Um, but I just thought that was precious. <laughs> so I don't know what, what lions have to do with the pumpkin patch, but it's a baby page and it looks cute. So there is a circular element, a little circular embellishment cluster on the sketch in the corner. So opposite of the uh, banner. 
So I went ahead and used my little We Are Memory Keepers evolution die cutting machine to cut a circle from that scrap of that gingham just so I can pull that color over there. And once I did that, I was like, okay, well, let's create a visual triangle since this color is pretty bold. Um, so I found a tag that also had the brick red gingham and I'm thinking that'll be a cluster to the upper right just so you can see how I'm forming this visual triangle. Um, there is the two month icon on this tag, but I've already scrapbooked Avery's two months, so I know I don't need that tag for anything else other than the pattern. So I'm just planning on tucking it behind the photo just so I get that pop of the color. And then uh, for my ribbon, since that was a recipe item and I had already pulled in this yellow ribbon with this collection on my second layout, I went ahead and pulled that in as ribbon for this page too. So again, threading my tag with the yellow ribbon, but I just cut a little trim of it um, to be an accent piece in each of my clusters. So that also creates that visual triangle with that color and that texture. And I think the wavy trim is really cute, especially on baby layouts. I don't know what it is. It just adds a cute little uh, element. <laughs> so I'm trying to figure out my three clusters here. I'm pretty happy with the um, spacing of everything. I'm really trying to stay true to the sketch here and keep my clusters where they had them. Um, they did have the title running along the bottom of the photos on the banner, uh, but since I have turned their sketch, <laughs> I'm still gonna have my uh, title at the bottom of the page. It just won't be down the banner since I have this little line cluster coming off from the side here. So I'm just trying to figure out what I want in each area. I'm trying to stick to these more autumnal colors I've pulled in, so um, the maroon and the yellow. <laughs> So I have this little Oh Baby sticker, which I think looks really good with the lion. I do want to cover up the blue star that's on that sticker, just because I prefer to stick to the florals on this layout, since um, I kind of already did a star page, <laughs> and this is more of a florally theme and during the day. So um, I will go back. I'm trying to find, I found that yellow die cut there that would cover up that blue <laughs> star. So I'm popping that up on some foam and, um, You'll just never know that there is a blue star there. <laughs> I am gutting, again, a massive chunk of this yellow paper for a future layout. I did do my mixed media, I think, too far into the page because <laughs> I didn't want to gut anything that kind of had the mixed media on it. Um, but it's still a decent size that I'll have for another page, so I'm okay with it. Uh, again, we'll reinforce this with my cheap black paper. Uh, and then I'm going to start gluing things down, but I really like how this one came together. I love using sketches. I feel like they come together so quickly. And for this specific page where I had papers that went so well with my photos, this one was really fun to put together. Um, so I have my sketch I've used. I've used my stencil on the background for the mixed media. I've used my decorative scissors and I have my ribbon. The only thing I'm missing is the torn paper. So I am trying to keep that in mind, but I'm not quite sure where that element's going to go yet because I've already used my decorative scissors on an edge. Um, so I'm trying to use all of these things, but not exactly in the same way or in the same areas. So it's not too confusing. Um, but I just put that on the back burner for a minute because I know where all these clusters are going to go. So I'm going to go ahead and start sticking them down. I definitely, again, wanted to use a couple more of those specific motifs that I think might be hard for me to use up this month. So very happy about getting the lion used. I definitely wanted to use a rainbow because there's a ton of cute rainbows in this collection. Um, so I found one that has the yellow, the maroon, a pink, and again, that light blue from the lion's bow. Uh, so I put that in the bottom right hand cluster as the main element in that one. Um, I do want a motif up by the tag as well, but I'm kind of struggling because it is tucked a good bit underneath the photo to cover up the um, two that is on that one. So I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to layer but not cover up too much of the gingham, which was the whole point of pulling that tag in. So um, I decided instead to figure out the whole torn paper thing. I had a scrap of the white. Um, paper from when I matted my photo. So I just tore that and I'm going to tuck that on the top and bottom of my layers. I think that adds a really nice detail. It freshens up the page a little bit. Um, and I think it's a good transition from this wood grain onto this yellow um, just on the top and the bottom. So it kind of also accentuates the vertical <laughs> design I've gone with, with having the banner going vertical. Um, 
but it doesn't widen my layers at all because I don't want it to crowd my little circular cluster to the right. <laughs> so it kind of all worked out pretty good here. Um, I didn't leave myself too much room to tear on this other section, but I figure it out. <laughs> and again, that just sandwiches my wood grain layer and I think that looks really cute. Um, that's another really good thing I like to do if I'm just looking for another layer, <laughs> but I don't want to use another pattern paper or just pull a scrap of white and tear it. <laughs> It turns out good. Uh, so I'm going to try and feed that back there. I've already glued these layers down, so I'm trying to feed it through without having to unstick anything, especially because the trim that's through that tag I have glued to the background. So I really don't want to have to pull that up and tear the paper. <laughs> um, but I figured out with my little tweezers, um, for whatever reason, even though I thought it was the right size, it overhangs a little bit on one side. So I'm just going to trim that little bit up a little. Um, and then I definitely need to finish out the cluster with the tag. I'm pretty happy with the other clusters. Um, I'm going back to the sticker sheet. There's a ton of really cute word stickers on the sticker sheet. So I'm going to try and get several of those on each page. So I'm trying to revisit. I really like the Oh Baby sticker, but I did just add a little play all day <laughs> sticker. That's kind of a light version of that um, brick red. And then to the rainbow cluster, I have, I wanted some yellow down there. And so I saw the happy sticker, but once I pulled it off, I realized it was actually a longer sticker that said baby in kind of the rainbow colors and then happy. I thought about trimming it so it was just the happy, which is what I was going for, but it's going over the rainbow that has all the same colors in it. So I actually thought it would be cute to use it as is. So that stays down there with the rainbow. And then I did find this really cute little um, polka dot camera that has that same maroon color and a wood grain uh, detail. So I thought that was also perfect for this page. Um, I do want uh, flowers in each cluster because I have the flowers in the lion cluster. So I pulled a couple flower stickers off and I'm trying to figure out where they go. Uh, I thought about the cream flower being up by the camera but it just wasn't want, it wasn't tucking in how I wanted it to next to the camera. So I decided to tuck that down by the rainbow instead and put the maroon flower up there by the camera. So, uh, but I was also missing a word sticker up by the camera. So in that same color as the one I added to the lion cluster, I'm just doing a little love you so sticker, which is also really cute. <laughs> Um, and then here's that last little maroon flower. So super cute. And all my recipe stuff is done. So I just need to finish out the page. Um, there is another page coming from this pumpkin cat patch where I'll probably do some journaling. But for this one, I just wanted the title um, and I wanted it to be pretty simple. So I'm just doing pumpkins in white because <laughs> I wanted some more white down there, even though it's very obvious that there are, there are pumpkins on this page. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just really like for design reasons having that white foam title down there just kind of pulls it all together for me. I haven't added any enamel dots yet. I'm trying to figure out if I want to, if it looks done. I kind of always have this struggle when I use the flowers as finishing touches. Do I go back and add enamel dots? So I'd be interested to hear what you guys have to think about that. Definitely open to adding some other finishing detail. Um, but I love how this page turns out. I love how easily this collection can go in several different directions. I feel like all the pages I've made so far are very different color schemes, even though they're very clearly the same collection. So I love how this one very easily went autumnal. Um, that worked out really well. <laughs> I think I'm just finding an exclamation point. Uh, I didn't think I had an I for a moment, so I thought I was going to have to trim an H into an I, but then I found one, so I did not have to. <laughs> but I think we're done here. And then close-ups will be here in a minute. So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you check out the description for everyone else playing along with Scrap 5. If you want to use this recipe, please tag us on Instagram, hashtag uh, Scrap 5, and I'll see you in the next process video. <laughs> Bye.